Dr. Sundar Rajan. Yeah, it's audible. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. okay. So now uh, we have Dr. Sundar Rajan working as scientist uh, E in the Department of uh, Coastal uh, Environment at the NIOT National Institute for Ocean Technology, Chennai. Actually, he, Dr. Sundar Rajan completed his uh, PhD in Madurai Kamaraj University. After he joined in uh, NIOT uh, in uh, 1998, since then he is working as various capacities uh, in uh, National Institute of Ocean Technology, Chennai. Actually, uh, he is uh, one of the pioneers who initiated uh, uh, the marine plastics work. And currently he is working on uh, marine acidification. That is one of the very important component of uh, uh, climate change. So he will uh, share his experience, how our hostel ecosystems are vulnerable, uh, how the hostel uh, ecosystem management is being designed by the various institutions across India. So now I request uh, Dr. Uh, Sundar Rajan to deliver his lecture. Instead, uh, it's going to be an uh, interactive session. So he will, uh, you can stop at any point of time. Uh, he will explain uh, you rather than uh, yeah, uh, delivering uh, more. So now I uh, invite Dr. Sundar Rajan and one, uh, one and all the participants to interact with him during the course of lecture. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Professor Chandrasekhar. Well, good afternoon to our participants. Uh, is Adibal, am I able? Audible, audible. Yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah. Audio, video, okay. Yeah. So, let me go to the first of the Sunday. Oh. Uh, sir, if you can go to the right side, bottom corner of your screen, you can see a present no option. Okay, sir. It's working. Yeah. Okay. It's okay, sir. You're sharing your entire screen. Yeah. Ah, okay. So my topic is impact of climate change on coastal ecosystems. So as we are all aware that climate change can affect coastal areas in a variety of ways. The coastals are sensitive to sea level rise, particularly. And changes in the frequency and intensity of national hazards, important by storms and high waves, tsunamis, twisting sunrise, increase in precipitation or changes warmer of ocean temperature. And in addition, with the rising atmospheric concentration of carbon dioxide, or causing the ocean to absorb more of the gas and become more acidic, the pH level may reduce. This rising acidity can have significant impact on coastal and marine ecosystems, like its organisms, cold spraying organisms. Addressing the additional stress of the climate change may require new approach to manage the land, water, waste disposal, and ecosystem functions. Like what are the key points of climate change and coastal ecosystems? Climate change threatens the coastal area, which are already stressed by human activity, pollution, invasive species, and plants. Sea level rise would erode the inadequate coastal ecosystems and el eliminate the wet plants and coastal erosion also one of the important issues in particularly Indian coastal areas. The warmer are uh, more acidic oceans and are likely to disturb coastal and marine ecosystems. The variety of ecosystems are there and its own functions. The coastal development, like infrastructure, important harbor industries, the ability to natural systems to respond to the climate change. The ocean acidification, and as we know that ocean acidification and climate change are linked to each other by their common driver of 
carbon dioxide emission. The climate change is the consequence of the range of, range of greenhouse gases eh, emissions, but the ocean activation on global scale is solely by increasing concentration of atmospheric carbon dioxide. This is dissolving the water. Reducing carbon dioxide emission is therefore the most effective way to mitigate the ocean acidification and its impact on the ecosystem. The linkage between ocean acidification and eliminate the chain and the United Nations climate change organizations are identified the possible scenarios for developing common solutions to reduce and adapt to ocean acidification and climate change are offered. Areas where the United Nations Federation of Committee for Climate Change is currently lacking the capacity to effectively take this issue. So the what is the acidification? Let's come to the acidification process. How it is happening? So due to the industrial evolution. More than 1.6 trillion of carbon dioxide have been emitted into the atmosphere as a result of burning of fossil fuels and rapid industrialization and human activities. This emitted carbon dioxide, approximately 80% of this emission, are absorbed by ocean. And the CO2 is absorbed by ocean. So, as we know that carbon dioxide is water soluble, there is some chemical reaction will occur which will reduce the pH of the ocean water. That means the increase in the acidity. The ocean uptake CO2 in the excess that transforms carbon added as a CO2 into the bicarbonate and carbonate. This three dissolved forms as known as dissolved inorganic carbon in the ocean waters. Approximate ratio is ratio, this ratio is 1 is to 100 is to 10. The one molecule of carbon dioxide and intermediate molecule unstable is bicarbonate, HCO3 minus, and carbonate, which is most important for calcium, uh, calcifying organisms. So then, this H2CO3 is the is a, uh, carbonic acid, is weak acid which forms CO2 dissolving water. The dissociation, after that, some reaction, it dissociates, this weak acid dissociates into the hydrogen ion and bicarbonate that is the unstable ion intermediate with some of the hydrogen ion then re reacting with the, the available carbonate to form the second bicarbonate in the water. So this is the reaction what I explained then to you. So this CO2 so dissolve in water with respect of wind effect in the surface water portion. So then it will form carbonic acid and hydrogen ion with bicarbonate, then two hydrogen ions we are getting and two carbonate ions. So CO2 again it will react, this is the continuous reaction, the byproduct is bicarbonates are more and carbonates and hydrogen ions. The so adding CO2 to sea water is an increase in the hydrogen ion concentration. So as we know that logarithmic scale of hydrogen ion is acidity. So this pH measurement particularly and bicarbonates. But a yeah, reduction in carbonate ions in the water. The decrease in the carbonate ion reduces the overall buffering capacity of CO2 in cases, as I said. With the result that the proportionally more hydrogen ions remain in the solution and increase the acid facility and decrease the carbonate ion. At the end of this century, there are some predicted studies that then the ocean pH is expected to decline by another point 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 pH scale. This change has wide ranging impact on marine life, particularly calcifying organisms and decreasing the coral reef skeleton formation as we know that coral reef is one of the more marine protective areas and uh, uh, important for particularly coastal corrosion things and uh, its PCC richness in the coastal areas and molasses. So the process in the ocean acidification, let us see, as I already explained that one, see what is dissolving.
dissolved carbon dioxide with water in form of carbonic acid H2CO3. So this is again this carbonic acid is weak acid is dissociating, then dissociation with hydrogen ion is given, then one bicarbonate. Again, if we think the bicarbonates are reacting with again one carbonate, hydrogen ion is released and one carbonate ion. But this is the normal process. It happened in the water body. This percentage of change in atmospheric CO2 is increasing, then it is varying the spatogen ion also, and the carbonate ion is also decreasing, and the hydrogen ion is increasing with respect to the CO2 concentration in the atmosphere. So, this is the impact of acidification. So, there are Direct impact effect of CO2 on pH and pH. The impact on organisms. So, how it is affecting the acidification on organisms, particularly the reproductive systems, then behavioral changes, then photosynthesis also, then calcifying, calcification of cell forming organisms, respiration, then particularly this, you see this uh, nutrients is most important one for it. Photosynthesis and the primary producers of phytoplankton grow. This ratio also it is altering carbon and nitrogen ratio and the carbon and phosphorus ratio also. The nitrogen fixation is one of the important ones that also affecting in the directly so many things. Python, particularly in Python, the chemistry is very usually one of the other values. Common is one of the other values. I will explain to you. Then the indirect effects are particularly the ecosystem functioning. Then what and biogeochemical process. This and all interlinked with each and every parameter functions. The primary producers, this is the ecosystem function. Then this is the economic ecosystem services, fisheries, food security, biodiversity changes, and coastal protection like uh, coastal erosion and sedimentation of in the coastal area and climate regulations also. They reduce the strength of the biological carbon pump. Then change in the nitrogen oxide things, and all these are the impact of acidification so with respect to the climate change. So, the ocean acidification is the direct impact, on, like, like I said, direct impact how it is affecting the organic calcium carbonate saturation is most important one parameter which help to form the calcium organic cell formation, skeleton formation, particularly for coral reefs. So, the many organs and coral reefs. Or produce cells, the saturation compound of calcium carbonate that affect on calcium carbonate formation by calcification. If the calcium is available in the water, then already I showed you know, this is unstable bicarbonate compounds of both react together, calcium carbonate will form, then CO2 and H2O. Right. Then we can say this also this calcium carbonate react with carbonate will form the calcium carbonate. The calcium carbonates will let us say arcanite and calcite is part. They are categorized this is based on the strength of the things. Was dissolved in the acidified conditions. This calcium carbonate then it is in the in the acidic condition. The dissolution rate was calculated in the following in this equation. See the omega rate called the omega value. The concentration of calcium, the concentration of carbonate, and the one constant. With respect to the atmospheric pressure and the temperature, how it is going to be dissolved with CO2 in the water. So, omega value, when we are calculating from the, uh, this estimated values of calcium, carbonates, and other things, the omega value is less than one, conditions are corrosive. So, they are undersaturated. For the arithmetic based cells, skeleton formation with the, so the farming is well affected. That means. Waters are super, when the omega values are greater than 1, the waters are super saturated with respect to the calcium carbonate, and that is the good conditions are favorable to the living or calcifying organs and living and the formation of calcium carbonate that is the coral reefs. So, this, this witness will explain in clearly things. So, one is the increase in the acidification with the CO2 is increasing. The another one is the Y axis is temperature. So over the period of this pH is reducing, the cell formation also less with respect to temperature. When the temperature is high, 
Mr. Parmesan Gower Bridge. Okay, let's see what is high and the formation is a little higher. Because why this is temperature high in the time, the formation also a little high, but pH is less, as we say. This is due to the evaporation effect. This evaporation effect, already the formation is high in that. that we know that as usual, well, uh, things in the salt formation are more in high temperatures. This, this is the general uh, function in the formation of things, how it is impacting this pH uh, and the cell formation. So here you can see this is the coral particulate formation. The coral calcium formation the same known already I explained to you the previous the calcification process, how it is after this coral with the grass calcification is less than coral calcium is right. Then the grass dissolution is more. When it is highly dissolution due to the acidity, then there is lack of carbonate ion. Then the coral skeleton formation will reduce. Then the grass calcification is reducing. Then this means that growth of corals will be impacted. The sample, this is undersaturated, then it will slowly, this uh, calcifying materials of the corals will be dissociated. So this figure also the increasing when the pH is high, this, this calcification, the omega wells are high with respect to the hydrogen and and the CO2 things. The acidic is indirect effects, as I told you, that is the ecosystem services and the services. The radius the calcium increases and it will affect the food chain and food crops in the coastal ecosystem. The effect on aquaculture. Which is now most important for particularly developing countries like India and this blue economy, the human food supply. So, how this acidification or our climate changes that are related with the, our economy? The elevated, uh, the, their studies are most important, there are two things that are involved that thing. The elevated uh, CO2 concentration after the behavior of fish. There are few studies are conducted on the period of fish, uh, so it is affecting high concentration. No? It's a neurotransmitter function, it affects the interfering with the uh, neurotransmitter functions. The high CO2 also affects the, the receptors of the, the enzymatic activities, like carbonate, it will pass the behavior of abnormal fish in the wide range of marine organisms. So, I this is the for example for rock fish behavior of nature. It affects the oyster catching, the risk of coral existence with habitat loss and increase in the coastal erosion. Means once we learn the coral resurrection, the forests are one of the important coastal products, coastal and products. Like then another one of the important processes is upwelling process in the coastal area, the important driver for acidification. Because why? It is a wind driven force, this upwelling is happen in the coastal areas, the bottom sediments will come up. The, when the bottom sediment contains most organic compounds and uh, clay compounds, there is little acidic condition only. It will disturb the coastal soils also. So when the, this becomes with the carbonate variation shall occur. So we, we carried out some preliminary studies in the East Coast of India related to acidification, particularly in the Park Bay, and we know that uh, in uh, Gulf of Kandahar, Katari, Gulf of Kandahar area. So these are the things we have collected the samples uh, fortnightly from all along the Park Bay and the Gulf of Kandahar area for three years. Uh, we measured some selected parameters, particularly uh, pH. Alkalinity, carbonates, and nutrients like nitrite, nitrate, phosphate, uh, things um, to estimate the omega value, particularly for what is the calcifying and the uh, saturation things, calcium carbonate. This is the depth profile for our knowledge. For this is Gulf of Mana depth, this is very less only. You see this, 5 meter depth only. This is the Park Bay region of Gulf of Mana as a maximum. There are so many islands also there. So, so we finally we found this is the total bicarbonate, carbonate, and total alkalinity. We collected the samples and estimated the things. 
and the omega value we estimated by using this formula. So it is very clearly this is the basic variation we have collected from 15 seconds of past day. This is the omega value saturation level. This and all the favorable condition only because this omega value is higher than one. So now there is no much risk. If the omega value is high, then it is highly favorable for cuts by organic substance. So when talking this Gulf of Mannar area, we think we have done this carbonate, bicarbonate and popular from the estimation, and the estimation and also. Uh, See the here in this omega value, it is underestimated. So this is the risky area on this zero of five sites. So there may be a lot of reasons. One is the pH then, other one is this is the coastal region. Then there may be the fresh water entry is there may be an alter the carbonate chemistry and pH. That is also one of the reasons. This is the anyway once it is the less than omega, then the uh, process is less then this particular site is risk for marine organisms. So the ocean acidification pressure is the knowledge of the effect of ocean acidification pressure is currently inadequate. But if only limited studies were carried out, the effect of acidification on fish and its eggs are the effect of low pH on fish egg and larval development have not been sufficiently studied, very limited because this and all. Uh, uh, in California, there are few studies they were conducted in the developed countries. This and all the site specific one. What is happening in the local species diversity and their egg formation, then it, how it is with respect to climate and climatic changes and seasonal patterns and all. There's also, this coastal upwelling of deep ocean water in the surface can produce localized acidification also. But frequently, this upwelling process are occur and recorded. It is very less studies on the top of conductor with the quantitative measurement. We can tell this time many times after quantitative studies are very less. The impact of water acidification on fisheries may include alter the food webs also. So once it alters the food web, then it affects the that's our blue economy, fisheries things also. The small scale fisheries too. Fisheries, employ value at 90% of the wealth captured fishes. Very close near source areas only. Mostly they are capturing the small village people and all. There's a large gap in particularly country like India is but in this large gap, large vessels, deep sea fisheries are very less. That are important to food security and power elevation countries like India. The weekly help from fish and seafood provide essential fatty ashes. Now, as we know that primary source for think of 1 billion people in the world. But this protein is, is like it is directly impacting the economy, good economy. Fishery and actual production, distribution and marketing employ it almost 600 to 700 million people are probably involved representing 10 to 12 percent of the world population. Also, it is involved in each and every country in the GDP also. That is, it is 20 to 25 percent of the contributing to the GDP of the countries, like developed countries. What we should do with this effect? The mitigate any effect of ocean species can reduce the emission of atmospheric CO2. They establish the coastal monitoring network is one of them. So, when it, mitigation, the answer is here. The postal monitoring network for standardize the measurement of postal This is the one of the long term process due to the seasonal variation and year on year what is the changes, decadal changes. So we have to establish the postal monitoring properly with less uncertainty. So the measurement has its own uncertainties. So that also we require the basic infrastructure for monitor such a, a long term changes. Support research and valuable food based stream on the other surface in high CO2 condition to enable the socio-economic assessment of the particular food security in the aquaculture field. Implement best practice and adaptive management fisheries and aquaculture to increase the ecological precedent of marine ecosystems. So these are the most important things we have to concentrate with the respect to climate change and this ocean acidification, in particular the coastal region. To 
stabilize or uh, sustain the our environment, the coastal environment. But increase the adaptive capacity building, capacity of fishing community. So education is most important. Our acidification after by training and support to diversify livelihood is where needed. So something happened that the area is what is the alternative to their livelihood. Or they have to go with some other practice for agriculture practice for or their economy. We bring multi stakeholder exchange of information and communication among parties, social communication, businessmen and uh, researchers. Because now everything cannot be done by government. So now we have to bring some alternative established technologies there with respect to things. If the businessmen will come and invest in, then it will become a little uh, industrial oriented irrespective of the conventional practices of culture of uh, this aquaculture of that nature. This international organization, then what are the technology, possible technology we can explain, and how this knowledge to policy makers can take decision and allocate the funds to. Uh, mitigate or manage this due to the climate change or this ocean acidification impact on ecosystems. So, the monitoring of coastal pollution is one of the important things. So, if there are any doubt in this coastal acidification, so now I am going to talk about the monitoring, why we want to monitor, how it is going to be important for coastal this, uh, our, uh, climate change. Am I edible? We have participated in any social activity. You are audible, sir. Are remaining part of the things? You are audible, sir. I am audible. In the uh, certification side, let me continue as I finish it. Final MVP. That's better, right, sir. We can finish it and we can ask. Oh, okay, okay. So we have done extensive monitoring. In the last two, three, two and a half decades in the Indian coastal areas. So, as we know, this is where I have to go and meet my app. Is it correct? Otherwise, I am moving here and here. <laughs> yes, sir. No, it's. That's uh, okay. Ah. Uh, no, 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 no. The monitoring of coastal pollution is one of the important things. What is the existing status, baseline status? So, the, the India, country like India, we have done last almost 20 25 years only this monitoring, intensive monitoring, more sites and all. Uh, very less sites only concentrated. So, these are the sites we have done extensive work in our land Indian coast. As we know, we you know, practice that the major portion of wealth populations lives within the 60 kilometers. From the coastal line, most of the major uh, metro in the world where you can see that. So, this map for reference of the we have done action studies in the particularly this part for sites in Indian coastal areas. See, now it is not limited to 24, it is in the Bangladesh, it is in the Pakistan border. Now it will come around 40, around three, three, three years back, like we are not updated, I think. So, India has vast extent of coastline of 7,500 kilometers that spent. We marine, maritime states and the union territories. The protection of coastal area is one of the major concerns. The coastal area is coastal erosion and the various ecosystems in that. It supports almost 30% of human populations being dependent on the rich exploitable coastal and marine resources, fisheries, and the other activities like our port and harbor activities, infrastructures, those things and that. So the coastline of Bay of Bengal and Arabian Sea, we know that rich fishing grounds in the Southeast Asia. So India is one of the largest marine products producing and exporting nation in the West. As we know that marine ecosystem, particularly in the coastal areas, we are limiting like this, rest to rest, based on its functions, rest to rest, coral reef areas, marshes, uh, lagoons, sandy and rocky beaches, mangrove forest areas and sea grasses. These are the most sensitive and biologically rich ecosystems are known for their productivity. 
and provides very range of habitat for many aquatic flora and fauna. It also provides important food source also, as we have told, the critical major services to human beings. Therefore, the sustainability of this ecosystem should be our primary concern with respect to the human activities and uh, other uh, natural processes also. The moreover, human activities in the state of fishing, excess of fishing, shipping, and coastal area developments like infrastructure and coastal urbanization. And most of the industrial estates now, this is the developing in the near the coastal area, it needs to disappear there. That's the discharge of untreated effluents, that's right. From industries have caused considerable damage and caused severe threat to the coastal ecosystem. In addition to this man-made activity, that the global warming and climate change also pose major challenges to marine ecosystems. So how it is going to be are impacting these things, how we are going to predict those things. So for that we need the basic uh, baseline data for predicting the uh, future impacts. So as you know, this is the estuary. We have done some almost some 10 estuaries in India. Uh, waters. This is a story. See how oh, it is. This is a thought. I think for reference, I put this is a story. We have collected the sand story. Right? Not right. This is the mouth. This, this adjacent side, this is the sea. What is going on? You know, this is the uh, open air for fertilizers transporting things in the uh, port area along this. Thought is in near Surat, Gujarat. So as we know that in this history is also why uh, highly fertile grounds. You see, it is the um, both freshwater and marine water exchange sites. The salinity availability is very high. The species also will survive in here, and uh, the most of the breeding activities happen in particularly some selected estuaries. Because if the large fishes cannot reach to here, so some fishes will come and uh, put eggs and they uh, say things also. It will act as a catcher in the marine areas. As you know, that coral reefs, it is in marine, it will protect the coastal erosion also, and it is very high uh, bio uh, resources for particularly various uh, uh, end endemic species. Habitat in the boundary areas of the So, another one is this backwater lagoons in Kerala. So, how this is in, in the, in the involving in the tourism things, the economy thing. And lagoons are most in backwater, but this is also this guy salinity variation, where the fishery activities are not of the that are involving both tourism and fishery activities in Kerala. These sandy beaches, we know that both will account for this other and this. So we have largest, second largest basin in that. This also the particularly for sedimentation process, the sands are more, the sands are supplied by the, as you know, the uh, water transport or sediment transport in the coastal, all along the coastal. It will accumulate things, it will be good to protect the coastal systems and uh, save the coastal lines also. The rocky beaches, we can see that somewhere. Uh, this also will protect the coastal erosion things. The mangrove forest, as we know, this is one of the uh, highly uh, biodiversity area, I think, uh, forest species also. Uh, with respect to this climate change, our estimation things and all, this how it is going to be deforest or altering its germination of the mangrove seeds is most important one. And surveys of its uh, root things and all. Uh, the other one is seagrass bed. Seagrass bed is very few places in Indian coast throughout the world, also very less. The seagrass beds also the exposure to uh, sunlight and other, this increasing the temperature and CO2, this acidity. This seagrass, the photos we have taken from, I think, Gulf of Manar area. Then we come to the mark important summary. Monitoring and restoration of ecology. In the effective monitoring requires an understanding of long term changes in the status of resources and their environment. 
this effective monitoring at least last time changes in the video to monitor the things uh, that it is the site specific also it may vary to site to site and location with respect to climate and that the primary purpose of the monitoring programs is to detect the changes whether it is short term or long term or seasonally or biennially uh, those things are determined its cost how it is going to be affected with natural or living organisms and other things whether it is natural process or anthropogenic activities the act to we have to develop and evaluate the management strategies for whether we have to mitigate or adapt as a uh, the inverse of the adaptation technique or resilience things and that. Overall, the monitoring program will assist the understanding the general health of the coastal and the marine ecosystem and predict. So once we determine the causes or detect the changes with the baseline data, so once we are doing, we can use this data to predict the coastal modeling things, ocean modeling with the help of the hydrodynamics. We have to collect the physical oceanographic data like tide, waves, currents, all those things, the bathymetry data. We can give this input and we can predict the what is going to be after 10 years or 15 years with respect to climate change or uh, with respect to the uh, social activities in that. So these are the important for monitoring. So we can predict the things. The monitoring and restoration is the view of danger faced by various anthropogenic activities in recent past. The assessment of water quality in person is the most important, as we know already the conservation management. So apart from this, the federal government has its own act to restrict the activities and discharge the things in the coastal and ocean thing. And then, uh, for uh, uh, international organizations also there, IMFO is there. The National Maritime Organization, IOC is the Government Oceanographic Commission. Those are the organizations where uh, so many uh, rules and regulations are framed to adopt the uh, and mitigate the things and restrictions also. So, in, in, particularly in Indian medicine, we have the CRJ rules and we have the, in this HTL and LTL means high timeline and low timeline. In the coastal lines, so you can have aware about I think the tidal various tides are the uh, most important one. Then, coastal water quality standards are also there. Are given. Now, we are going to there are certain criteria to maintain the uh, water quality standards like air. Yeah, we know that the uh, uh, industrial area there is some PM2.5 is this much, PM10 is that, sulfur oxides, SOIX, and uh, so we establish ambient air quality standards in one parameters in particularly in India. The well-being object is there, uh, the concentration. Like this, this coastal water quality standards are also there, the research research standards are also there. Uh, so they become to this. Based on this man-man activities, the government, the Ministry of Environment and Forest and Climate Change, they have established very long time these five types coastal segment assets. Subject to the several types of users, depending on users and member activities, depending upon types of users and activities also have been specified. Among various types of users, one uses demand the high level of water quality is required because of the sensitivity areas that designated best use to strengthen the coastal segment. We can maintain as least to sustain our water quality standard. We see this table. Yesterday, one is a salt pen sensitive areas, the self facing mariculture areas, and ecologically sensitive zones. Then, SW2, bathing area, the water course, and the commercial fishing areas are there. SW3 is industrial pooling water, some power plant discharges, then recreation, and then unaesthetic pooling. SW4 is harbor area, port and harbor areas, this little highly polluted and disruptive area. Then, SW5 is navigation and control. Waste disposal areas. There, there are uh, municipal waste, all those things we can discuss at certain point. That will I will uh, explain this way. how we can, uh, government is allowing to dispose the uh, waste that are into the sea coastal areas. That things and that. See, based on these uses and uh, uh, things, they are given the standards, water quality standards, we have to maintain the disposal water standards. PH we have to make SW1 is in the sensitivity of salt pain all those areas. PH we have to make this disallocation is required because that is the sensitive 
the next one is less only. Then we come to this one, fourth is harbor area and fifth is the uh, west discharge and the uh, navigational channel. Here they are concentrating the floating matters and all they are not considered here. So, uh, now they are establishing some other uh, parameters also to maintain uh, this waterfall standards also. The government is implementing. Here, this is the thing, they are around the floating matter is 10 milligram per liter. Floating matter line that even suspended sediments so because here port and harbor area more activity is they are allowing up to 10 milligram per liter. The same thing is the sensitive zone, the metals, heavy metals, toxic metals, lead, cadmium, iron, glaciers, 0.1 milligram per liter. Then people polygon, they are not, still not established the standards in this area. But the Pentium pure, this is the people polygon, other things, they are allowing high concentration in this bathing and which are the areas. So biochemical oxygen demand is one of the biological indicator for pollution load, so particularly the coastal that is a port area. Iron is especially three they are giving so this is the industrial cooling water, recreation and aesthetic things. They are given this all magnets also they are which still so they are not established in standard. We need to cool. So that's why I am coming at the next the rest load allocation. So I told here that rest disposal. How much we can dispose with the help of prediction studies and baseline monitoring. There is one value and funds project we have did for the major estuaries in India like Kapi and the Kubli estuaries in uh, Chennai coastal area, Bombay coastal area we did in uh, 2002 to 2010, the waste load allocation concept. So how much waste we can discharge? It is not going to be asked. Uh, disturb or alter the criteria established the criteria we have seen that just we have one of the The maximum load of pollutants in each discharge of waste is allowed to release into the particular water. That's why the government is allowing to discharge the waste but for the extent. And the industries are getting permission and uh, most of this uh, in municipal also they are collecting the sewage and semi filter and discharging into the ocean. The portion of the total assimilated capacity, that is the most important one, the assimilated capacity of assigned to our individual discharges. So in the receiving water, we should be called the receiving water policy, rivers, estuaries, and coastal areas. That the assimilated capacity depends on their nutrient budget, all those things we have to establish with the help of that, but monitoring, regular monitoring and predicting by using the dressers and discharge water quality standards and or its uh, quality of uh, um, uh, water and quantity. quantity. So WA is one of the most effective methods for achieving desirable water quality, what we have said that SWO1 water quality, SWO5, assimilating capacity also. So WA, WA is based on the environmental monitoring, the environmental monitoring and predictions. We have that lot of now three uh, source of uh, software are available and the pay things are subscription. We are, we are using the Mike 21 software that is there and Del 3 software are there to postal uh, prediction studies for water quality and other value. So there are, they are given almost to some 20 25 pounds of collection by using the software. So this is the simple uh, explanation process, process of how this uh, dispersion studies. The prediction studies are the things. Uh, if this is the one stream or let us consider the coastal water. If the recreation area, recreation area, the boating area are fishing zones. This is our standard criteria. So we have asked this DO level is where it is the high zone, five level, five level, five This water quality criteria for this we have to be maintained. So of course now we are discharging the effluent. This much quantity when we are discharging it in different places. So now the, uh, our values are this is the level, but this is the entry point. Let us consider the entry point upstream of the river or port area. So once this discharge started, this DO is starting to reduce. So 
So this is the, this is the danger point now. See, so we are losing now. This is below the our criteria level, then it, it will affect the ecosystem. Then again they are recharging. So when this area again is going down with this criteria, then then the charge is reduced. Then over the period it is increasing. But now we want to attain this level, that criteria. So what we are going to do with the help of the WDA process, rest load allocation process, and carrying capacity. So we are reducing the load, the charge load in the app. So up to this. Then this, how we will estimate this volume in, with the help of detector models. With different scenarios we have calculated. And there are various factors are involved in site specific constant of the variation and biological oxygen demand. What is the thing? What is oxygen demand in the bottom sediments and the living organisms and the bacterial population? There are more than 200 factors are involved with in an nutrient cycling. All those things in the model, then particularly the Nicolet model is there that that will help us to predict these things. So finally, with this tool, we can achieve this water quality criteria. Means then we will sustain our ecosystem. That's why this is the most important one. So with that help, we can achieve the same. our uh, required quality of water. And the significance of maintaining water quality and to maintain the quality has already progressed. So it is at the limit. If you have a work based on converts, water samples from district sites have been collected and done like this. are the studies what we have done. Last three cases, as we know, last three decades, there has been a tremendous increase in the use of products in damaging the environment. What are the products that we know that? So, particularly cosmetics. Then, this electronic instruments, refrigerators, washing machine, and, and so many electronic goods. The waste are reaching to the uh, ultimately, the estimation uh, in the different so overall, overall work includes assessing the environmental quality, imparting the criteria, and the standards of our environmental protection. <laughs> the water quality is in the first zone. So there are, then we are categorizing the two categories. One is the fine source, like industry discharge and uh, sewage treatment plants and dumping taxing. All those things. Another one is non point sources, so urban runoffs, coastal urban runoffs, then agriculture runoff. So we are essentially using excess name, fertilizers, and pesticides, and insecticides. Those things and all will discharge and run off. It will come through the runoff from streets and open this drainage channels, and it will reach the water bodies and deposit in that in the persistent pollutants. This is the thing, both point source and non point source. Point source is quantifiable. The, how much these industries are discharging with the quality and quantity, we can get the data, the data from them. We see uh, municipalities and municipalities, sewage treatment plants are industry things and dumping taxes also there are some profession with the uh, dumping sites also there, solid waste dumping sites also. This it is a little difficult to uh, estimate the non point source things. Then we have to go with the monitoring in the river. Then we can find the quantity things, but how long it will be what is in the uh, soil in agriculture or runoff areas. It is a little difficult to the extensive studies record this task based on the task. As we know that I told you the toxic organic compounds. These organic compounds are persistent things. Many are biologically active. Since all living things are made up of organic molecules, we know that. The industry use produces thousands of organic compounds, both manufacturing items such as plastics, synthetic fibers, rubber, pharmaceuticals. And these three things are the most important now. The pharmacies and pesticides and petroleum products also. The GSVPA has registered 100 systems of them as a toxic periodic pollution, persistent, persistent organic pollution. Mostly they are volatile petroleum, petrocarbon, and pesticides. The volatile group includes solvents, the paint and other paint chips and all those things. The polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon, like naphthalene and other anthracene, as well as the paint chips. So, then, then here we have done one study in the alkaline compound. 
in the armor of color in pencil side it has been immersed with its insights in the uh, oswald things so this term and already the way ban government ban in, in india 1996 other developed countries that have banned it in 1970s and 80s it is each country have after realizing the impact of this one they were done to use this argument compounds in the insecticide so in that kind of communication with our agriculture pests also that we know that the agriculture is affected the effect on soil and aquatic organisms was to percent due to the less salinity these compounds are less salinity that's why it is the kind of dry system compound water so, so here i would like to emphasize this is the less salinity like this temperature in this climate change increase one degree or two degree so then we are aware about the microbial activities the aerobic active microbial activities will increase the once it is increased means the degradation of this pollutants will increase the degradation rate of degradation is increasing this pollutants will become bioavailability of this increasing the concentration that the toxic may increase means that will lead to the diversity of the system that is why this, this are the comments now we are concentrating to what the existing status what is going to be happen with normal degradation or with respect to the climate change or any other uh, human induced activity in that we so study the condemnation of all green not only all green then petroleum or petroleum petroleum also we did some studies and question also so the another one is the metal toxicity to uh, target organs this is for our awareness purpose i am putting this uh, figure so we have done some metal studies in, throughout Indian uh, uh, coastal areas. We have collected the metals, the samples uh, from estuaries and coastal regions, uh, and tested the things. Uh, the US EPA list of nine metals are toxic, highly toxic. That bioavailability will alter the uh, ecosystem function also and bio lead to the biodiversity also. So the, that's why we did some metal sample analysis from both sediment and uh, uh, water side. How it is going to be affected with respect to the leaching side, leach. And the other thing is uh, bioavailability. And it will lead to the bioaccumulation and the biomagnification. How this biomagnification is going to affect the, our economy, good economy. Because once the bio this will affect the, the fertility of the uh, fishery things. But what will mean then we will lose the our potential fishery activities. Then it will be indirectly affecting the our economy, good economy. So these are the things you see arsenic. Through biomagnification, this is target organ is human beings on the mentioned here in narrow liver. Of course, these are the things. Then carbon, that's why the USA declared that these are the highly toxic matters in the picture. Then, then another one of the important activities in our economy is potent harbor activities. How the potent harbor activities has its own environmental hazard on uh, coastal ecosystems. So with respect to now and when today this is the thing. The when it is our climate change, our temperature is increasing, then sea level rise is increasing, then how much amount of uh, this waste generator are uh, eroded inside the coastal also thing is most important we need to be concentrated on this other feature. This is the track traffic, another one is the cargo handling measures, villages, chemical storage, all those things occur in the coastal areas, fueling of tracks, trains and freshwater things, repair the roads, well, this this one is I'm coming, channel dredging. One of the important thing is the channel that is developed. Liquid discharge from ships. So this is the important liquid discharge from ships. There's two things are there. One is the ballast to manage the stability of ships, loading or unloading. The ballast water they used to carry the water for balancing. That we used to become ballast water. So they were to discharge that. There is so many norms are there as per IMO and we used to call Marpole Convention. So then the ship breaking industry. Sir. So one is the building, another one is after some time, say, the ship has to be break. When the painting, regular maintenance in the painting right, of um, ships and boats also in the coastal area, the painting is important, but 
they get this rest reduced they are expect they biofolding biofolding they will carry this nitrogen carbon so that is the one of the toxic compound that may affect the ecosystem so basing the photon we are going to find the rising is what they say once we have to maintain the channel for large vessel movement we are dredging and disturbing the sediment in the particular area and dredging is excavation of sediment and dispersing them to different locations the material that from the particular area it can be a disturbing the bottom sediment there are some pieces also there so the that of then it will resuspend the sediment the resuspension of a uh, sediment particle that is called suspended solids are increasing it will limit the light penetration and it may affect the primary productivity of the zone also and also affect the uh, the native species what are the organisms there and the eggs and the things and that then when they are going to dump that whatever that they other in that sites are there the government whatever government are allowing to dump particular sites with the respect to clinical studies so they are dumping the dumping sites also it will affect them. so in fact of raising activities are marine habitats that is the things that they are going to be doing such as removal and capital species removal Our question about the proper work is also a certain change of nature and diversity of the the communities, the resuspend sediments. Then bioavailability. This is the bioavailability. This already said to the carbon. There may be some microbial activities or what things it might be digging there. But there may be the bioavailable part. Once we disturb the sediment, it will become bioavailable and leak out as well. This is the certain nutrients. The nitrogen channel, the nutrients, nitrogen and phosphorus are there. And, and immediately the growth of the phytoplankton increases. Mean, that is one of the important things that comes to an argument. Then we use the hypoxic zone and anaxic. Uh, hypoxic zone actually things one of the important thing. This the oxygen levels are reducing. Mean, then there may be uh, not tolerable to the living organisms. Then that will be the element is called as a desert. It will become a desert. So the management class is simply saying. So this is one of the places you may have done. The Alang is there in the Gujarat coast. There they are bringing the whole ship from various countries and our own Indian ship. So they are taking. With the, they have done legal process. They are getting permission, but they are recycling with uh, steel materials, all other. There are few other things like the volatile carbon refrigerators, oil, all those things. The procedures they are there. They are breaking the ship. And there are almost we have collected the samples from this area of our three plants, and then we have those uh, tested for metal laws and things. These are solid waste, impacts the solid waste disposal, the other environment, and all the charge personal health. Everything is there because there is almost thirty thousand people are involving for direct and indirectly in that area. That the ship breaking yards are uh, uh, also it is almost three to four kilometers area. More than a thousand things they are taking around uh, 30 to 40 ships. The things in the rest also from ship. So deep sea mining is one of the potential things now throughout the world. They are concentrating the things. Things are ecosystem form. Uh, now where else they are the deepest part? The provide habitat for multi species. May yet be named. So they still we are we are collecting some. Uh, deep sea sediments and they identify the microbes and the organisms. Still, not named few species also. Not that is not adequately studied. But now we are initiating to explore some uh, minerals from the seabed areas. This was the uh, Namibian nodules or the people developed to find where explore the seabed minerals. So there is the international seabed authority is allowing and allocating the uh, individual countries where we can do the. Deep sea extraction methods and technologies. So, this is the things they are adapting the pumping and the thing, and they are discharging the slurry. So, there are some minerals of that. In this is the impact from surface loss of substrate, sea floor, under under some architecture. We don't know about the this composition of the sea bed. And we know this is one. We are collecting the minerals and the uh, minerals, and again we are pumping the bottom of the slurry. So, So if there are things, then now we are linking it. We are linking it with climate change. Then what is going to be happen? This type of uh, industrial activities. 
So that are the new studies needs to be studied extensively in the uh, world wide. So these are the environmental rules to mitigate, control the environment or conservation rules of the in India. Ministry of Environment and Forestry is adopting, many things adopting. Uh, water Prevention Act for discharge of things, water prevention process, such as the air, high maintenance, so many amendments are there in well, that plan. Then, particularly for coastal, the CRJ, that is under, coming under the Enormal Protection Act, the CRJ, the yes, ESM, so the impact assessment, the Enormal Impact Assessment for coastal development, and all that and all that. Uh, the hazardous was disposal. These are the acts are there to regulate and maintain the sustainability of the things with respect to climate change. See, this, this is the things in the um, conclusion part. See, this is the rest minimization. Such this is what we are not practicing at the time. We mostly discharge, disposing the rest. Then only the energy recovery is left. Recycling, reuse. Minimization, prevention is very less. So now we want to shift from this type of practice to the, we have the best hierarchy things. Is we have to be prevent. Source itself is in, uh, we have to prevent. Now that most of the municipalities and other things is, they are segregating the, the source itself with the plastic separately, big and uh, organic waste like food waste and all. They have given instruction to the main method of the in Bangalore also, then Chennai also to the area they selected. They started to initiate the things. And industries also they have given instruction uh, to the Ministry of Environment and Power of Climate Change. Uh, the industry also now they have to maintain uh, this type of uh, degradable and recyclable and the new waste and the uh, things for biogas production and recycling things. And they are minimizing their waste generation from the industries of the uh, residential area. Then they are reusing most of the materials also. Then they have started recycling also the plastic and the wires and the, uh, other uh, e-waste materials. Then uh, finally they have been recovering the energy also. Then they have reduced the disposal. So this is the thing, say, it is not only the waste, this may lead to the particularly for uh, this, uh, our greenhouse gas emissions also we have to make the control or minimize the things. So many established technologies are the same. The prevention is the Instead of fire pouring, we say thermal power station. Now we are going with uh, uh, solar energy and wind energy. Those things and that may reduce the uh, CO2 emissions. And then, then it may reduce the at least the, at what extent we want to be reduced or stabilize uh, our CO2 emissions and greenhouse gas emissions. And uh, maintain the other existing climate change variables what is the site specific also because this and all most of the studies are the site specific and if the rate of uh, changes and reaction force is also site specific with respect to the, the temperature changes and microbial activities the other which are the, this light duration of light and climate change also so uh, with respect, I conclude this and uh, thank you. So the uh, more one more thing is now the United Nations Environmental Development Program is there. They are coming with uh, this destination as summary with sustainable goal development. In, in year now, 2015, they have adopted sustainable goal development that you may be aware about sustainable goal development. Uh, SDGs are 17 SDGs they are adopted. With 169 uh, targets. In that, in uh, so many population, all the things. So let me say one more slide. I would like to, uh, as a member of this, uh, I would like to do uh, this SDG. So, the overall, what the index for the calculated? Uh, in 70, are you able to see this slide? You have participants? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's already. It's a number of this I would like to share with this video the screen. So there are so 17 SDGs are there. One, two, three, this is the thing. So then the United Nations Environmental Protection Development, they are trained with the 2015 they established this, uh, this uh, uh, development goals. 
as it may be aware also this is the overall score for our india only index they have formulated some formulas to index in this and the region wise score also now they started to state wise also then they have put in our two reports 18 and 19 1990 and 1920 also the report has been updated for that premise i will share with you show to you to our index is average performance of each uh this sustainable goal development see this is the 100 percent there how the one one is what i will tell you this is the thing one and is what you see poverty second is zero hunger then good health the life is 17 is there then let me come to the other point due to time constraint this is the thing is 13 is the climate action 14 is still life under water you see the 15 also life on land these three are most important one then others are most mostly the socio economic activities uh, gender equality and other things and all are interrelated to sustain the development goals and achieve our uh, things so now where we are in india with this setting with the help of ministry of environment forest and then ministry of health sciences as we have met from for uh, this stg uh, setting Oh, sorry, it's the fourth now. Also, life under things is the eighth. Also, what we, we discussed with the first last week. Yes, now we have uh, developed the pH values. What it is telling us to our villages. What are the projects that we can follow on to reinforce for the last three four decades. So, with the help of the pH variation, we are coming to this. Which is that they are the targets and indicators. Of, so, what are the indicators that in sandal we have the the nitrogen and the air diversion in india niti ayog is the nodal agency to execute this activities to sustain our environment so this particular is actually this concept the one is social and think another one is economy another one is this environment most of now we are concentrating is the environment part so the another socio social things and the uh economy uh, also they are in slowly initiating that will be sent also indicating the major changes with the challenges of it dear hunger in this and all see challenges remain the species achieved is not nothing we have not achieved difficult to achieve hundred percent but this color indicating the our indian uh, activities but so far this is the thing sir so this is available in the stg things and the iof website so for knowledge purpose, I would like to inform you because if anybody aware, it is good. If you not aware, let me go through the sites. It's good for at least the latest time. Because now the United Nations declared it. Uh, this uh, DK is version for DK. The 2020 to 2030, what we have to achieve with the help of this 17 uh, goals. Sustainable development goals with the 169 targets and the there are n number of indicators with each target. Those things and that they are very clearly distinguished and mentioned that things with uh, individual indicators what it is going to be contributed with the help thing of our economy and all this is are interrelated. So, so these three things are most important. So this is what is the thing in vacation, between life on land. This is the trend, this is trend in India for I think it is 1930, concerned to achieve this with this. Performance by indicators, this is I told you the indicator. Power and power when we are going to be the value they have money. They have written some formulas are there. This is the trend. Now we are good trend, increasing trend. We are trying to reduce the poverty, zero hunger is with indicators. Prevalence, prevalence of standing. Low height power, these are the indicators with good health and well being. Uh, uh, national mortality rate, we have to increase, maternal, maternal mortality rate. These are the indicators for the social economy. This will come to the other point. This is the thing. So, this is one. Climate change, life below water. These three indicators, only this is only now in India is a little bit more indicator. And there are, we can add more indicators to bring account the all the activities or reactions in the process. With the 
under which ta target. So they, we know the goals, eh? 17 goals. In each goal has its own targets. So that target with, with the help of indicator, we can bring in the qualitative with the quantitative part. Once we are bringing in the quantitative scale with the brainstorm session or expert opinion, so then we can, at least we can minimize the error for our planning things, our estimation. So these are the important things that they come out now in India also in the area of, uh, with the help of most of the ministries uh, involving the collecting the data and something in the way. That our states also they are given graded for individual states also. That in all these details are available in the web. So these are the indicators uh, like below water. That's the main area that is the uh, marine site important to biodiversity. So 29, they are identifying now recently what are the marine protected areas like coral uh, reef area, uh, uh, then seagrass beds, uh, then sand dunes, like that. So many that protected areas. So the Wasm Health Index they are making. The like pollution, another one is health index. Clean water, sir. Uh, they are giving the values with expert people. The percentage of fish tax, how much it is there. Due to what are the anoxic condition and hypoxic condition areas in the most advantaged uh, coastal areas, uh, over exploitation, misusing the net, uh, then collapse with the exclusive economic zone. So now we are collecting the data as an exclusive economic zone. We are, we are collecting the bathymetry and other extra resources, what is the existing condition. So uh, one of our group, uh, we are involved in the bathymetry studies all along the east coast of India. Uh, up to the 30 meter depth or 50 meter depth, I think. Now they extended the ministry suggested recently to go ahead with 500 meter depth with the metrometric depth profile up to uh, every 100 meter uh, all along the Indian coast. Then another thing such as that fish caught by Kala. There is only limited data of fisheries survey. So this is the trend it is in Kala. The only one is the percentage of fish caught is. Our exploitation is high. They are getting more data and all. This is the ETC trend, what is the trend they have given. So, with the, this SDG scale, we can at least sustain and mitigate or, as a professor told, the adaptation of resilient things. And the World Bank also came to be doing some work. What is the existing condition? How much man so far spent for the last 15 years? For uh, plantation of mangroves and sugar banding preservation with so many coastal activities, including the uh, uh, cyclone shelters, tsunami warning systems, then continuous monitoring of those things that are we have collected, the data, and what we are going to do with this uh, decade to safeguard our ecosystem and sustain the uh, things from this climate change with acidification and um, other anthropogenic and natural processes. So, thank you. Thank you. So, <clears throat> thank you, Dr. Sundar Rajan, for your wonderful uh, and uh, yeah, informative lecture to the participants. So, now, uh, uh, students, if uh, any participants have any doubts, uh, you can uh, ask him or you can directly uh, put in the chat box, we will ask. Okay. Uh, by end of the 2050, I want to know how the important is mangrove forest going to be contributed to this because people are going for monopoly cultivation in the name of reforestation, which itself is ecologically not good. So, this what is the important for mangrove reforestation? Huh? So, mangroves are one of the uh, breeding grounds. Also, this will be uh, it, it will not grow in uh, entire uh, coastal areas. It will only where the nutrient enriched in the area. It will grow good. Eh? That, that you know, that you may be aware about mangroves uh, structures. It will predict the erosion. It will resist the wind speed also. 
Thank you, thank you, Anubhav.